Hello and welcome to McHale here in Ballinrobe. We're going to do some setup videos of the McHale full range of product and today we're going to start with the front and rear mower followed by the rake. So to start with we're doing the F3100 and the R3100 rear mower followed by the centre delivery R6878 rake. At the moment, Ger O'Shea, our service manager, is in the farm workshop setting the mowers up on the tractor. So I'll hand you over to Ger and he'll give you some tips. Thank you, Mike. So here we are hooking up the front mower to the tractor. So we've connected our lower link arms where we lift the mower off the ground and fold up our two parking stands out of the way. We've connected our top link here. So you can adjust your lower link arms up and down to connect your top link and to set it at the correct height. So we've an inclinometer here on the front of the mower which is giving you your bed angle. So you can adjust your top link to suit the correct bed angle. As you can see, the mower bed is already at an angle there of five degrees and we've the inclinometer set at zero degrees. So you adjust your top link to suit the cutting height of the crop you want to cut. Um, we've also connected here the hydraulic hose which is going to the hydraulic cylinder on the front of the machine. So if we lift up the front hood on the front of the machine here, we can see your hydraulic cylinder in the middle and you have two large springs on each side. So the hydraulic cylinder is used to lift the mower for transport and headland movement, get the mower off the ground. And your two springs are there to give the mower flotation when you're cutting the ground so it stays in continuous contact with the ground. So we've got to disengage the hydraulic cylinder bracket here. This allows the hydraulic cylinder to move, giving the mower full movement and flotation while you're cutting. We also lock this bracket up out of position so it does not go down for any reason. You drop this bracket back down again to lock the hydraulic cylinder when you're taking the mower off the tractor. So when you've all that done, the next step is to make sure your link arms are set at the correct height. So your parking stand here at the front, you can drop that back down quickly again and approximately two inches or five centimeters off the ground is the correct height for your linkage. Fold it back up again. If you change your linkage height, get into the field or any stage in between, from the tractor cab, you can see these two yellow arrows, which will show in line if the link, link arms are set at the correct height. So it's easy done, easily done from the cab. You don't need to fold down your stand every single time. So our next setting here is our drive line. So our PTO shaft connected to the tractor. Of course, your guards on your PTO shaft are vital that they're all in place and the machine is very safe. So we have quick release guards here. So all your PTO shaft joints should be greased daily. Uh, the PDO drive line through the gearbox at the front, down through this gearbox, through your conditioner gearbox and down into your bed. Um, check the oil level in all those gearboxes. It should be replaced once every season or every, every 2,000 acres. Um, the conditioner gearbox, you can adjust the speed so we can go from 1,000 to 700, depending on the crop that you want to cut. Um, our next adjustment is with this lever here. So we can adjust our swath width. So we have a hook on the bottom of the lever here where we can adjust the swath boards here at the back of the conditioner. So we can adjust the width of the, of the swath that you produce. And there's two more adjuster bolts here where you can adjust the length of this swath board to narrow or widen your swath roll. This lever is also used for removing the blades or the knives from the cutter bar on the machine. So if we fold up the front safety guard here. Get this curtain up all the way so you can see clearly. Here we have the bed of the mower. Um, you can see the blades on each disc. So with the blade pointing forward and the disc pointing perfectly forward, put the lever in behind the back of the blade. And as you push down on the lever, the blade is easily removed and new blades replaced. So. So the last adjustment on the machine here is on our conditioner baffle plate. So we've got a lever here on the front side of the machine. So we can adjust the conditioner baffle plate up and down to condition different crops in whichever manner you wish. We have two other options on the machine here. You see this one mounted with our two mirrors. So the operator can see when he's coming out of a field left and right quite clearly. You also have the option of fitting a set of cameras instead of these, which on a monitor in the cab, you can see quite clearly to the left and to the right. 
Make sure all the safety features on the machine are in place. So your safety guards, your PTO guards, everything is in the correct position so the machine works correctly. We also have our operator's manual and spare parts manual mounted in this unit here on the side of the machine. Now we're going to have a look at the rear mower just to see how we hook this one up and set it correctly for field use. Okay, so here we are with our rear mower connected to the tractor. We've hooked up our lower links and our top link. We folded up our parking stands where the machine is parked away on. We also have our weight block here where you can attach four to 500 kgs to counterbalance the weight of the mower. Again, adjusting our top link, watching the inclinometer here on the side of the machine to get the correct cutting depth. So set at zero degrees, again, your bed has about a five degree cutting angle in the front. So you can adjust your top link to suit the crop that you're cutting. Our hydraulic connection is probably the most important one for setting up this machine correctly. So we have three hydraulic lines here, a single hydraulic line, which are on off tap, and a double acting hydraulic function as well. These are connected to two hydraulic cylinders on the machine. So our double acting function is for lifting the bed up to headland or transport position. And our single acting function is for setting the correct pressure of the bed for when you're cutting. So the correct way to set up the machine is connect all three hydraulic lines, the double acting function, put the bed on the ground and put it into float position. So you have no weight, the bed is sitting on the ground correctly. With the tap open on your single acting function, you set the pressure on your pressure gauge here to 130 bar. Once you have your pressure set correctly, you then switch off this tap. The only time you will release this pressure is when you're removing the mower from the tractor again. Now your double acting function will lift the mower at the headland or fold it up completely for transport position. Also connected to this hydraulic system, we have one small hydraulic cylinder out on the bed of the mower here, which locks the bed of the mower in position once you lift it off the ground. So for transport or headland, that bed of the mower is in a fixed position. The springs which hold the bed in the correct position for cutting are set from the factory and shouldn't need to be adjusted. After this, we have our drive line connected to the tractor. So our PTO shaft connected back to our 90 degree gearbox here, over to our conditioner gearbox. Same as the front mower again, we have 1000 or 700 speed coming from your conditioner, depending on the crop that you're cutting. As all our conditioner mowers, they're running at 1,000 RPM PTO speed from the tractor. We have all our guards in place, very important safety feature on the machine. Again, we have quick and easily removable guards for greasing the PTO shafts on a regular basis. Also on top of that, here mounted on the back of the machine, we have our toolbox with some parts in it. So we have a set of blades for the machine, left and right. We have our hook bolt, which holds the blade in place. And we have our shear keyway, which is protecting each disc on the machine as well. You also have your operators and parts manuals here, and you have your handle again for adjusting your baffle plate, which we're just about to do, and you're removing your knives on the front of the machine as well. So your swath width adjustments. Again, we adjust our swath boards here in and out. So if you're determining the width of your swath. If you want to spread the grass to full width, you adjust the boards fully out. You can adjust the baffle plate at the back up and down also, and you can adjust each vein individually. You can also remove the curtain by folding it up out of the way and locking it in position. Our last adjustment really is on our baffle plate on our conditioner. Same as the front mower, we can adjust the baffle plate up and down depending on the crop we're trying to condition. So all our safety features are in place, all our curtains are down and in place ready for mowing. You have a grease point on each of the moving parts everywhere on the machine. These should be greased regularly. So this machine is set up, ready to go to the field. So we'll get going, we'll head back to Mike in the field and see this machine working. Thank you, Ger, and welcome back to the field. So Ger has just pulled in here with the front and rear mower. So we're going to take a stripe out here just to show you the machines in action. So we're running both machines at 1000 RPM. We miss. He's controlling the front mower with the hydraulic spool, so the link arms are set at the correct height as we've seen in the workshop. 
and we have the swart boards on the machines set so we're leaving a 1.2 1.3 meter row so as you can see the machine is set up to leave a nice uniform conditioned row for the baler so it's just ideally setting the swart boards as we've seen in the workshop both the machines are running at the 1000 rpm on the conditioner gearbox and on the rear of the machine to the left hand side you can see that we've fitted 400 kgs of ballast weight onto this particular machine which counterbalances when the machine lifts up at the headlands. All McHale mowers are the pull type design not the push type it's a pull type design so they contour and cover the ground very evenly and uniform so as you see the machines coming up you can see the suspension working you've got left to right forward to back movement on the mower so we're working there at about uh, eight nine kilometers per hour forward speed this is your normal first cut silage here in ireland which is quite a heavy crop we'd be yielding about maybe 13 to 14 bales per acre off this field and if you look at the front mower you can see the flotation moving left to right as the machine comes towards you so i'll show you a few simple adjustments on the mower so we got our blade changer here with a little curve on the end so we open the eye bolts here, so we bring our swart boards out to full width on both sides here on the front mower. Quite simple adjustment, just give them a little tweak up. We move back here to the rear mower. This board will be fine, we'll open the outside one out here to full width. And then we'll just turn down our rear spreading vanes here. And we fold up the rear curtain here at the back. We'll pop the handle back into the front mower and we'll be good to go. So we're good, Jerp. So now we're still running at 1000 rpm on both gearboxes. We've adjusted the front and rear mower to give us a full width spread on the grass. So with, with the boards open on the front mower and on the rear mower, you can see the difference that we get the full, the full width spread in the row as we travel down the field so it gives the grass a chance to wilt. Again, you can see the flotation on the rear mower as he travels forward. You've got left to right, forward to back movement on the mower. So it's a quite a simple adjustment to give you a different option when mowing your grass. Ideally, we'd recommend about maybe 150, 160 horsepower for the front and rear mower. Ideally, 75 to 80 horsepower per bed. Both of the machines are controlled by the spool valves in the tractor, so both machines are in float position when they're cutting. Next we have in the lineup we're going to introduce the McHale rake so we'll use the 68-78 rake today to bring these rows together ready for the F5 and V6 baler. Thanks Mike. We're here today with the R68-78 Sintra delivery rake. I'm just going to go through a few tips and pointers on how to set up the machine properly. So as you can see it's connected here to the lower links of the machine. Make sure that it's level across the the main beam of the, the chassis and as always when setting up the machine make sure the key is out of the ignition and in your own pocket. Um, so then you have your PTO shaft this is ran between 350 and 450 rpm as indicated here on the decal on the headstock. Then you have your single acting spool this is used for your lifting your rotors and is usually set at float when working. You have your double acting spool here. This is used for your, your width adjustment of each rotor and then you have your 7 pin lighting standard lighting socket. You also have your 3 pin euro socket plugged inside in the cab. This is to operate the hand piece that's normally inside in the cab with you. This can be used for lifting your rotor. You can flick it left or right so you can lift your left rotor or right rotor or flick it in the centre and this will lift both rotors at the same time. 
You also have a number of grease points here. These should be greased daily and all the greasing intervals can be checked in the operator's manual. So then we move back here then to the Y gearbox of the machine. This, you can change the oil in this once a season and it's pretty much maintenance free. You also have your flow control valves. These can be adjusted when changing the rake onto a different tractor. They can be adjusted in small increments to make sure that each rotor is lowered and lifted at the same speed. So then we move on here to the height adjustment, the rotor height adjustment. So you want your tine here, ideally set between 10 and 25 millimeter from the ground. And this can be adjusted by rotating this handle up or down. And the height can be seen on the indicator in the center of the, the rotor. This can be set on both sides of the machine, so make sure that the number is set the same both sides. So then we move back here then to the, the rotor and the cam adjustment. So you have this mechanism here, you have a, a clip on the bottom that can be taken out. The mechanism can be lifted and you can adjust it from one to eight, one for heavy crop and eight for lighter crop. You can, as you can see here, we have three tine arms taken off the machine for storage. We'll demonstrate how to put these back on when we're breaking out in the field. There's a storage position here for the, the tine arms. You have three here on the left and three on the right. So they can be taken off and put back on the rotor. Then we can move here, the tires either side. Make sure that your tire pressure is set correctly and make sure that your wheel nuts are checked daily. Um, you have your steering linkage here, number of grease points as well that should be greased daily. And then we'll move along here to the tine arms. As you can see, you have your tine retainers and your tine deflector plates. Then on the, the rotor arm here, you have a number of grease points for the sliders and for the bogies here on the, on the, on the rotor arms. Then you have your heavy duty maintenance free cam track and you have your independent suspension here on each, each bogey and steering on the front. Then you also have the safety guards here that can be folded out into position when working out in the field. The rotor width indicator here can be seen from inside in the cab and this can be adjusted from in cab as well. Um, make sure that you don't turn on your PTO when the indicator is in the red on the decal. And as you can see, on each machine, they have the flask with the operator's manual and spare parts manual that can be referred to if needs be. So with that, I think we'll go and do a bit of raking. Next up, we have the McHale Centre Delivery Rake. The model we're looking at here today is the OR6878, working from 6.8 metres out to 7.8 metres. So as we walk around here, we look at the machine, it telescopics up to fold down. It's all got quick change tine arms as you can see. I'll just simply show you here, it's quite simple to remove a tine arm. By simply opening the clip, you can slide it off like this and it can store on the rear of the machine for transport. But even with the rake, with all the tine arms on, you're still below four meter transport height. The little guard here on the outside is a good indicator, a good mark for, for working. So we'll move around here and today we're bringing three, three meter rows or three 10 foot rows together. Normally we'll operate the machine at anywhere between 350 and uh, 450 RPM. As I said earlier, the rake we're looking at today is the McHale R68-78. This machine is designed with 13 tine arms. Each tine arm is equipped with four 10 millimeter tines. And as you can see, it does a lovely neat job of raking the ground and leaving a lovely uniform row. The PTO speed will be anywhere between 350 and 450 RPM. And we're working at a forward speed of between nine and 10 km. The rear steering axle works brilliantly. As you go around the bend, it leaves a nice uniform row and you can adjust the height of your rotors by the handles on the front that you've seen earlier to make sure you leave the ground nice and clear. The rotor arms themselves are in the float position when the machine is working and it carries on the six wheels. So the rear two wheels are on a bogey system and the front two wheels have independent steer. 
So we also produce a slightly smaller machine, which is the R6272, which is more designed for two rows, like two nine or two 10 foot rows. It's where this machine has the capacity of doing both. The rake itself is designed with the Y-type gearbox so the drive line comes back on top and goes out left and right each side to the rotors. This is a much better design when lifting and lowering your rake, you put your joints under less pressure. And the machine itself is fully specced in that you've got individual rotor lift. So when you get to an awkward point in the field or an odd shape field, you can lift one rotor individually, left or right, just to finish your row off. So even here today, when we're dealing with freshly cut green grass, the machine can do effortless work in gathering it all together and leaving a nice row. The main difference between the R6272 and the machine we're looking at today is that it runs on four bogey wheels and it's got the uh, 11 tine arms, but pretty much everything else is the same spec on the machine. The drive line is all water shield as you can see, and the machine sits on the lower links. Horsepower requirement for this machine will be in about 100 horsepower. So that completes the working of the rake, so I hope you found the setup of the mowers and the rake beneficial. Thank you.